Something that really irritates me, right, especially online, is when people state things um, as fact when it's actually more like a matter of opinion, right? We're like, oh, that eye makeup is too dark, it's too dark. When it's actually like, you know, too dark is a matter of opinion and personal taste, that kind of thing. Or if I'm doing someone's makeup, for example, and they're like, I don't want too much. And I'm like, well, what's too much to you? Because too much to me is like, beyond. So what's too much to you? You know, it's an opinion. It's a, it's a personal preference. In my reaction videos, I often give makeup advice quite enthusiastically, I think you could say. But however, makeup has a theory to it and I kind of stick to those kind of guidelines. There are situations where quite literally makeup doesn't work in a particular way or a certain way. And I know that from experience, right? A long experience. I want to touch on a certain type of creator who you may be familiar with, who I've actually featured once in a reaction video, who have been annoying me for some time. And these people are the elegance coaches or the elegance experts, right? If you've never seen these people before, the only way I guess I could describe them would be the... Mm, they almost try to make the female more feminine. You'll see why I use those words, because, well, You'll see why. In, I, I kind of, in my mind, it's almost like a less aggressive version, the opposite gender version of an alpha male. If you don't know what an alpha male is, check my alpha male video I did on my reaction channel because they are just something else. They are just something else. Biggest douches ever. Before we get into this video, do please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment. That really helps. If you don't know what to comment, just comment elegance. Okay, so elegance, right? When you think of elegance, I personally, I think of princesses in finishing schools with books on their heads, learning how to walk in a straight line or or knowing what um, fork to use for their scrambled egg. I guess that's more etiquette than elegance, right? So of course, I'm like, I don't really know what elegance is or what it means. Is there a one size fits all version of elegance? So I Googled it. Elegance is often defined as the quality of being graceful, stylish, tasteful, or refined in appearance, behavior, or manner. In terms of physical appearance, because this is, this is what I'm gonna touch on also, elegance refers to a combination of grace, poise, and attractiveness. In terms of elegance in behavior and manners, elegance refers to gracefulness, politeness, and refinement in social interactions. These interpretations are pretty open, right? Words like tasteful, graceful, stylish are all open to interpretation to us and in different social circles, in different cultures. It's all different. Refined is, is a different interpretation for everyone. And although these are pretty open-ended interpretations, there's a group of um, content creators, I wanna call them, because content isn't great, um, who think that there is a one-size-fits-all version of elegance and that things should be done a certain way. And let me tell you, they don't mince their words. So they tell you how to be their version of elegant. And, and of course, they're also selling something alongside it. Let me share with you some examples. I had to put some different music on it, but she's basically pointing at things saying elegant, not elegant. And this is um, a common theme throughout this person's um, videos. Now, Noah's job, elegant and not elegant. And then she's posting pictures of people calling them not elegant. For all we know, this person's nose could be their natural nose. And yet she's calling it not elegant and assuming they've had a nose job, right? Then it comes to, um, let's go to microblading, where she points out at this shape, her preference is elegant, and then the second one is not elegant. The only difference between these two eyebrows is the way that it's been penciled in. And that one eyebrow actually has a little bit less product in it. And actually, if we're talking about the first one, I wouldn't, if we're doing elegance, perhaps um, sculpting the brow like that wouldn't be elegant because we'll get into it, but according to their makeup standards, it's not elegant. So this ends with the eyebrows and then we go into this screen, right? This whole TikTok is one minute and five seconds long. 
This is 25 seconds in, and in the rest of the TikTok is this ad. Stay classy and cozy this winter with Elegance eBook. 85 pages, 200 interactive links, New Year's Eve outfits, and winter elegance tips. Now 30% off, link in bio. These are always 30% off. <laughs> <laughs> they don't change. Five types of pyjamas that are not elegant. The cartoon pyjamas. Although they are very cute and adorable, they do not belong to elegant style. If you wish to look like a classy lady, I would definitely skip these. Secondly, oversized t-shirt pyjamas. These also do not look too sophisticated. I don't think this type of pyjama will improve your quality of sleep or comfort or look. Thirdly, pyjamas with slogans. Just like the ones with cartoons, they may be adorable or even funny, but they do not look very elevated. The fourth type of pyjamas that are not elegant are polyester pyjamas. I wholeheartedly admire anyone who can sleep through the night in those pyjamas. How do you not sweat in all of that polyester? Instead, I would advise investing in good quality silk pyjama. It can thermoregulate so it will warm you up in winter and cool you down in summer. And lastly, pyjamas with very visible signs of usage. So for example, holes, scraped off prints. Keep in mind elegance is subjective and this is only my opinion as a finishing school graduate and etiquette coach. If you want to elevate with your style, check out my elegance ebook, the link is in bio. Bye. Now, when I think about this, I do wonder, there's two things I think about. One is clearly you have to have money to be elegant because you have to um, invest in silks, right? But also who the fuck are you wearing these pajamas for? Your elegant, your pajamas aren't elegant enough. For who? Like, I know we like to do nice things for ourselves, but nobody's gonna tell me you can't wear a pajama with a rugrats on because it's not elegant. Who's gonna see? Your partner? If you feel elegant in your slogan pajamas or your polyester pajamas, although I do agree polyester isn't that breathable or nice, then you do you. I do wonder if in finishing school they do teach what pajamas you should and shouldn't wear to bed. That would be one to find out. Now we also have this other person, I can't remember her name but I'll have it on screen, who is just the most ignorant person on the internet, and some of you may be familiar with her. But let's watch this. Three things elegant ladies never do. Three things elegant ladies never do. They never try to impress anyone. They don't wear luxury designer brands with big logos and branding to appear rich. They don't buy loud fancy cars. They don't brag about how much they travel or how they have men lined up to date them or to propose to them. Truly well-off ladies never show how much wealth they actually have. They don't feel the need to prove anyone anything because they are confident and secure in their position. Elegant lady- I think so. I think that's just- should be normal. Don't talk too much about themselves. They are very good listeners and they take mental notes. They don't reveal all the cards at once. You don't want to be an open book. It will take a lifetime to unveil all their mysteries, which makes them so alluring and they leave you wanting more. You wait, 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 but we don't try to impress anyone, but yet we try to be alluring and leave you wanting more of such a lady. On a similar note, elegant ladies are never too much. They are not too loud. Their makeup is never too obvious. Okay, so this is, this is where she starts annoying, right? Because she puts in examples of people who she doesn't consider elegant. Yes, you can look at makeup and be like, you know what, I would have done it this way. But then to start posting people's choices of clothing, body type, things like that, and we she gets into race as well, is too, is, is, isn't like, I wouldn't call that elegance. Sexual. They don't call or text you all the time. They are never desperate. They never chase. It is a masterful balance to be desirable, yet not trying too hard. To be confident, yet not coming across as arrogant. It is a skill that anyone can learn. If you want to become an elegant lady, I wrote a book, Your Guide to Elegance, that will help you on this journey. Five things that make you look invisible. Number one, wearing black color. Look around when you walk on the street, especially in a colder time of the year. Everyone is wearing black jackets, black hoodies, black jeans or leggings, black hats, black shoes. I wear black all the time. And trust me, I don't look invisible when I'm walking on the streets. And a lot of people don't. It's the kind of black you wear. Also, I thought we weren't trying to impress anyone. It is so easy to get lost in the crowd if you are wearing black. But we're not trying to impress anyone, in this. Whites, pastels, beige, light colors White are more refreshing and pleasant to look at. Number two, overly casual look. Denim jeans, basic t-shirt, especially if it is a plain gray t-shirt. This is the most typical and boring outfit you can possibly wear. 
personal preference, personal choice. I think what she's wearing now looks like a medieval costume. Personal preference, personal choice. Nobody will remember you. Nobody will notice you. Number three, teenage outfits. Hoodies, crop tops, sweatpants, Converse shoes. Every other teenager looks like that. If you are an adult woman, you need to have classier and more sophisticated wardrobe. Number four, trendy outfits. If this is a trend, First of all, most of it looks ridiculous, but secondly, they are sold. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm just being a little bit mean because I know that she is, she's awful as a person. She's saying that outfit looks ridiculous. You are sitting here wearing this curtain-like medieval top. Let's not be too judgmental. Everywhere, Sara, H&M, Primark, Shein. This is where the majority of people shop and they end up looking all the same. Number five, wearing a bland ponytail or a typical messy bun. Many women became lazy and stopped taking care of their hair and styling it properly. So they end up walking around with a messy bun most of the time. Styling your hair, you will stand up. So, okay, sorry, but this... <laughs> This kind of hair this stuff here are wedding pictures. They're pictures that are just done after a professional stylist has done the hair. I don't mean to be horrible. Her makeup, her hair isn't like this throughout any of her content at all. And people will notice, trust me. If you want to know how to there create even. this effortlessly chic look, have this charm, allure and mystery without looking- Again, again, effortlessly chic, according to who? So I have to add in here because I know how people interpret what I'm saying. Um, I'm not saying she looks terrible, apart, apart from that top. I'm just saying that she's going to hold these high standards for other people and say that it's not elegant, you shouldn't look like this, it's boring, it's this then follow those standards yourself, you know? So that content creator, her name is like Level Blue or something like that. And she is known for being very, very tone deaf, doesn't take accountability for anything she does, even when Jackie Aina calls her out. Anyway. You have to unfollow most of the people you follow on social media. And yes, this includes me. If for whatever reason, my videos don't make you feel good or influence you in a negative way. This year, 2024, I want to be a lot more intentional about the kind of content I consume on a regular basis and kind of people that I follow. I decided to filter out any drama content, women against men, men against women, who pays for what, who brings to the table what, all the celebrity drama, what Meghan Markle said or did wrong this time, people attacking each other in stitches, people who get offended about everything, rich people being completely ignorant and openly rude, poor people being angry and blaming everyone for their misfortunes, any negative news and doom and gloom videos, especially pages that directly or indirectly promote consumerism. Shop with me videos, haul videos, Amazon finds, beauty and fashion pages that constantly shove products into your face. I am already pretty minimalistic with my possessions. I don't want to be constantly bombarded with hidden ads and product placements. Social media is 100% the reason why we have massive makeup and skincare collections. Starbucks cups, Stanley bottles, tree hut scrubs, slime, crystals, over 15 different workout sets, storage containers, aesthetic packaging for everything, a bunch of random useless plastic gadgets from Amazon, unhealthy, full of sugar and chemical snacks, 20 different coffee glasses, throw pillows, perfume, and so much more. She loves a green screen, by the way. Okay, a few things I want to touch on, right, within some, some good points, right, if it wasn't her. She brings up all these points, and then goes on after this to make content that goes against exactly what she just said. She makes content including things that turn men off, things that elegant ladies never do, and make him beg for your attention. <laughs> is the title of another one, where she says that women have become insecure and desperate. Now, in my mind, and tell me if I'm wrong here, but she is comparing women to women by 
using all these pictures as examples in her content. She's saying, this isn't the correct way to be elegant. This isn't an elegant woman, which is in her mind the best thing to be. You should be doing this instead. This is elegance. She calls them things like sloppy and boring and childish and all this other stuff in her content when they're just wearing like normal clothes. You know? And in terms of shoving products in our face, I do totally agree. TikTok especially is this huge, huge, like, selling platform. Every other video is like an ad or a TikTok shop ad. But she has two courses she always talks about. She's always selling it. It's also my opinion that she is selling a fake lifestyle. She has these elegant courses, but a lot of the time she seems to just be making shit up as she goes along. My main thing here is her fake backgrounds, right? So she's, she's obviously stayed in this hotel and taken a picture of the windows and stuff, and she loves a green screen. She loves to sit in front of a green screen. And she's also also been known to photoshop herself on vacation. Ladies never make wearing brown lipstick with gloss on top of it or lining your lips in a dark lip liner and filling it out with a nude color. I saw ladies using contouring to contour their lips hoping to achieve an effect of larger lips. It looks ridiculous as fa- You know what's ridiculous? Photoshopping yourself on vacay. <laughs> now this might look like nothing. Um, but again, I want to touch on this, like, fake lifestyle thing. Because she's selling this thing, like, I'm so elegant, you know, I do all this stuff. There's always something very off about her videos. She's always sitting in front of, like, a blurred green screen with this background or some, like, lavish place or some luxury place, which she may have visited once or twice and taken a picture of. But, um... She, she kind of sells this fake lifestyle, whereas her videos on her actual YouTube channel, she just has, like, a regular house, which is fine. But, like, you're, you're trying to sell something. Anyway, sorry, back to this Photoshop picture of her on holiday. It's very, very obvious that she has edited herself into this picture of this swimming pool, right? Let's go to this side. With her skin fraying on the edges, her hair being photoshopped, hair that randomly appears from mid-air here, and all this kind of stuff. She's turned comments off. Obviously, it was so fucking obvious. She always has this green glow around her, which is a sign of green screen. And even in this video where she was saying, like, unfollow people, you can see her hair is, like, against the background. It's just very strange. Either that or her lighting setup is terrible. But why would we be doing this, right? Tell me, level blue. What's the purpose of this? Why did you Photoshop yourself on vacation and then did things like hashtag luxury lifestyle, luxury lady. They never tried to impress anyone. Pool view, luxury vacation, luxury travel, luxury, luxury traveler. They don't brag about how much they travel. They don't feel the need to prove anyone anything because they are confident and secure in their position. What's the purpose of this fake lifestyle you're trying to put out there? Why do you want people to believe you're traveling, but you're still in that luxury hotel you were in? that you're in a luxury room. Why do you want people to believe that? Is it part of your brand, being rich? Is that part of your brand? Can you be elegant and poor, level blue? Or elegant and on regular wage, level blue? Because you make content saying you can have no money and still look elegant. So why the fake backgrounds then? Mm? Why the fake luxury holidays? Now, Level Blue is perhaps better known for being a, um, for being a ignorant, uneducated content creator who lacks any ability to take accountability for what she says, which I think would be pretty elegant of her. She did that. She makes various ignorant comments that make her far from elegant, but one I mentioned earlier was the lip liner incident. When I was learning how to do makeup, I had a huge advantage and a huge privilege that I learned from black makeup artists, right? I learned how to do makeup on black people from black people. Even clients, even my black clients would teach me how to work certain bits of makeup. I wasn't charging them, I was still learning. In a time where makeup actually wasn't that diverse and wasn't actually readily available for everyone of every skin tone, it wasn't as good as it is now. It still needs improving now, but it was by far not as good as now. You had your brands that catered especially um, for deeper skin tones, Iman, Black Up, but they would often teach me how they did their makeup, and I would learn so many tips and tricks from them. One of them being, 
about lip liner. Now, this is a common known thing in makeup now, but back then, this was a really good hint and a really good tip on how to make lipstick seamlessly blend on the lips. It, it looks stunning. Makeup mistakes elegant ladies never make. Wear brown lipstick with gloss on top of it or lining your lips in a dark lip liner. I saw ladies using contouring to contour their lips, hoping to achieve an effect of larger lips. It looks ridiculous. Say what you really want to say. Just spit it out and say it. I don't have a problem with femininity or elegance content, but as a non-dark skin person, you are the wrong person for this particular tip. And I've been doing makeup for a very long time. So you may be the expert at that one thing. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to learn from me on this one. And perhaps you can use some of this advice to tweak your future curriculum. And I do see that you follow me, so I'm gonna explain to you why that particular tip was not received well by people who look like me in your comment section on that video. For dark skinned people, wearing a dark brown lip pencil is literally the only way to get most lip colors to be flattering on our complexion. Like, there's just no way around it. Now, there's also levels to it. Obviously, the look can go from more extreme to more subtle, but either way, it is a thing. Most of us are just not all one skin color, especially on our face. For example, I have pigmented lips. It's just normal. Have you ever seen someone with dark skin trying to wear like a nude or like a peachy or like a pale pink lip color, but around the perimeter, it looks ashy? That's what happens when you don't know how to do a trend to suit your complexion. Now, I quite literally, literally made a career out of doing that. Showing brown girls how to do that, but for us. I'm not an elegance expert, but I do know a thing or two about being in an industry that was always quicker to say, that don't work on your complexion, this looks tacky on you, this looks ridiculous, versus what they should have been doing is saying, here's a brush, I'm gonna show you how to do this on your skin tone. You need to be super careful in the future about using blanket statements, like not elegant, ridiculous, when talking about beauty rituals that are specific to a particular culture. And for whatever reason, if you just did not know that the brown lip liner thing was connected to most brown girls' beauty routines, then it sounds like you have some rewriting to do. Thank you and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And like Jackie said in that video, there's no problem with content that's like how to live like this way, how to do this way. But when you're ignorant about it and when you're saying that other people's lifestyles aren't as correct as yours, if that, that's where you kind of like get a little bit fucked up. One thing I want to, to point on and point on? Point out, right? Is a lot of the points that these elegance, these, a lot of the points that these elegance coaches touch on are identical to the points alpha males make in alpha male content, including such phrases as being a high quality woman. And that's often a term used by alpha males when you're talking about women who are a certain, um, more acceptable as a woman. The choice of clothing, the choice of makeup, the style of makeup, when you do your makeup like this, when you dress like this. Now, I can't comment too much on this because I'm not a woman, but what I can say is the ideals and the, and the views on women that alpha males put out, they are extremely toxic to women mainly, but also to men and young boys who consume this content, right? They they are controlling, they have this, they want to have this control over what a relationship should look like, the, the, um, the social standards, the social, what's it called? Oh my God. How a man and a woman should be in public. Like Level Blue was saying, how she was describing how an elegant woman should be in public is how alpha males say that a high quality woman should be in public. These views from alpha males are highly controlling and borderline on emotionally abusive. Both the advice that Level Blue give out and these horrible alpha males give out on these terrible alpha male podcasts that make them look like virgin little bitches is gross. It's gross but it's the same. They're giving out the same advice. And again, it's okay to want to be elegant, do finishing school, do all this kind of stuff. But when it comes to judging other people and comparing other people, that's when it gets a little bit toxic. And especially when you are ignorant as fuck. So yes, there are some good things, you know, it's okay if you want to be an, an elegant woman, but when it says things like you don't wear those kind of pajamas because that's not elegant, you're quieter in public because that's not elegant. You're I mean, what is it? The Victorian times? Like, come on. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Okay, let me know down below, of course, your opinions. Thank you so much for joining me. Consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you very, very soon.